What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today we are doing another nail polish 101 video. It's been a while since I've done one on my channel. If you are new, basically my nail polish 101 series is an ongoing series where I teach the absolute basics of nail polish. And today we're going to be talking about how to restore glitter nail polish. So I've actually already done a couple of videos on restoring nail polish. I did one video many years ago on how to fix your old gloopy nail polish. And I've also done a video on how to fix your base and top coats. But throughout the years, one question that I am consistently asked is how do you fix a glitter nail polish? Now I have talked about this in other videos, but I always like to repeat it. You should absolutely not be putting nail polish remover or pure acetone into your nail polishes. I know that that used to be a technique for thinning out your nail polishes, but what that does is it breaks your nail polish down over time and it's going to make those nail polishes unusable. But I'm sure like many of you, I have always heard the rumor that you should also not be putting nail polish thinner into your glitter nail polishes because it'll supposedly ruin the glitter. And let me tell you, I have a lot of old glitter nail polishes that I have had sitting around in drawers for absolute years because I was scared to use my nail polish thinner on it because I didn't want to ruin the glitters, even though I couldn't use them anyway. But today I am going to teach you the proper way to restore your glitter nail polishes. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about why people say that you shouldn't use thinner in your glitters. So I've got two holographic glitter nail polishes. Both of them were in pretty rough condition. I have OPI Champagne for for breakfast. This is a silver hollow glitter topper and I have China Glaze Glistening Snow and this one is a full coverage glitter and this one also has a slightly textured finish. So I've always been really nervous about restoring these two polishes. One, because I didn't want to ruin the glitter and especially for Glistening Snow, I also didn't want to ruin the textured finish. Both of these were in pretty bad condition, but I'm going to show you step by step how to restore them. But first, let me tell you the secret to restoring glitter nail polish specifically. Specifically. Yes, you can use nail polish thinner, but it has to be a specific type of nail polish thinner. So this is the thinner that I have always used and talked about on my channel. It's the Beauty Secrets Nail Polish Thinner. It only has three ingredients in it, which are butyl acetate, ethyl acetate, and heptane. And that is really great for restoring most nail polishes. But this is not the product that you want to use for restoring your glitter nail polish because it has heptane in it. So what heptane does is it actually eats away at plastics and glitter itself is a type of plastic. So if you use a thinner like this one in your nail polish that has glitter in it, what it's going to do over time is it's going to start to break down and eat that glitter. Even if the polish seems to be working in good order now, what you'll notice over time is that it's going to have less and less glitters in it. And if the glitters are larger, you might actually notice that they're not the right shape anymore. And eventually down the line, the polish is going to be unusable. So here is the solution solution for that, what you want to do is you want to find a nail polish thinner that doesn't have heptane in it. Now, there are nail polish thinners that contain other ingredients like toluene or formaldehyde, and those are typically things that aren't found in nail polish anymore. What thinner does, and I've talked about this in previous videos, but what it does is it restores ingredients in the polish that have evaporated. So you want to find a thinner that has the ingredients in it that are in nail polish. So when I talk in my videos about a polish being three free or five free. I usually say it doesn't contain a lot of those potentially harmful ingredients, stuff like toluene or formaldehyde or some of those ingredients. So you don't want to be putting back in ingredients that don't already exist in the polish. So your best bet is to use a thinner that only has ethyl acetate and butyl acetate in it. I know that was a lot of information all at once, but basically just to break it down, we want a two ingredient nail polish thinner. What I'm going to use for today's video is the KB Shimmer Thinner. This is an indie brand, so it's only available online as far as I'm aware, but I believe that OPI and Orly both have two ingredient thinners. I would just double check that before you make any purchases, but I'll link all of the options down in the description. And if I find any others that are just those two ingredients, I will also link them down below. So yeah, let me show you the process for how I restored these two old nail polishes. It's actually a really easy process, but I also like to take a couple of extra steps just to ensure that this doesn't happen too frequently. So let's roll the footage. So we'll start off with the glitter topper. This one is OPI Champagne for Breakfast. As you can see, it's pretty dried up. So it's kind of just crusted along the bottle. And when I opened it up, I realized that there was definitely some crusty bits stuck to the cap that probably kept it from closing all the way, which is probably the reason why it ended up getting a little gloopy. As I applied it onto my nails, it wasn't too bad. Honestly, could probably still work with this, but it really wasn't self-love 
leveling and I think the brush just got so gummy that it made it really hard to apply. So even though I could do it, it just didn't feel great. And then here is the full coverage glitter, which is China Glaze Glistening Snow. And from the outside of the bottle, you actually can't tell that anything's wrong with it. But once you open it up, you can see it's actually completely dried out. So this one was actually a lot worse than the OPI. And I don't think it was usable at all. I tried applying it onto my nails just to show you guys a little before of what it looked like. And this is with having some product on the brush but it just was not applying as you can see really could not get it onto my nail I promise you I was trying here it was just impossible <laughs> So let's begin the restoration process. I'm using these lint-free wipes. They're the new ones from Cirque and I'm just gonna put a little bit of pure acetone on them. Now I know I mentioned that you don't wanna use pure acetone in the polish, but you can use it to clean the neck of the bottle. And in this case, because the neck of the bottle is dirty, it's keeping the polish from being able to fully close, which is what's making the ingredients evaporate and what's making the polish clump up and get really thick. So this is the first step to making sure that it all starts working properly again once the cap is able to close then we can restore those ingredients and then we don't have to worry about it happening again and I ended up doing this with the China glaze bottle as well but it wasn't as severe so I didn't even bother filming that part and one thing to also check is the inside of the cap sometimes it can get a little crusty in there as well and what I recommend is using a q-tip to clean that off I didn't think it was too messy on the inside of my cap so I didn't even bother but I recommend doing it so now for the fun part I'm gonna take my thinner like I said I'm using the KB Shimmer one, but you can use whichever thinner has these two ingredients, the butyl acetate and the ethyl acetate. And then I'm going to start pouring drops into my glitter. So I'm using the OPI one first. I like to start off slow, but usually when you have polishes that are this thick and clumpy, you need more drops in there. So a lot of bottles will say start with two to three drops because this one was a little dried out. I knew that it was going to take more than that. So I started with about eight and then I just shook it. Now, one thing that happens a lot when you're working with a nail polish this gloopy is those little steel mixing balls that you find in every polish actually get stuck within the clump of nail polish and my main goal is to get the nail polish unclumpy enough that I can free those stainless steel mixing balls because once we do that it's going to be a lot easier to mix everything and integrate it in really nicely so after my first shake up it still wasn't freeing those mixing balls so I went in with another eight drops and already I'm using a lot here so using less and then and just keep on adding until you are satisfied with how it feels and just make sure you keep on checking so after I shake it up a little bit I will open the bottle and see just how smoothly flowing it is if it starts to flow really smoothly in the bottle then I'll try it out on my nail and I know it works but in this case I still needed to shake it up a little bit more so after another eight drops I know that's a lot I ended up being pretty satisfied with it and I started kind of just turning it around in my hand instead of shaking it vigorously because because I feel like that's an easy way to see if the polish is a nice consistency, if it kind of moves around the edge of the bottle normally. So then I checked it out and I was pretty pleased with how it looked. So now moving on to the China Glaze, which like I said, this was the more difficult one. And you can see just around the inner neck of the bottle, it is completely dried up. So I knew it was going to take more drops than the OPI one. I still didn't want to do too much at once though. So I ended up going in with probably around 10 to 12 drops because I knew it was going to take a lot and then I started shaking it very vigorously. At that point I still hadn't freed the mixing balls from the clumps of nail polish and when I opened it I could still see that it was very clumpy and difficult so I knew I was going to have to add more so I went in with another 10 to 12 drops and once again just shook it up nice and good. One thing to keep in mind is when you're shaking it you're not going to fully incorporate those new ingredients unless you're shaking it a lot. So if you do a couple of shakes and open open it and it's still clumpy, you want to shake it up more. Make sure you shake it up a good amount until those ingredients are fully incorporated before you decide to add more. It can be a little misleading. So eventually I was able to free up those mixing balls and you can see they were leaving little trails along the sides of the nail polish bottle. So I knew once I started shaking it up again, I was going to be able to get some really good mixing going on and those mixing balls make such a huge difference and it really helps separate out any of those clumps. You can see 
at this point we were starting to get a liquid again in the polish so it wasn't super clumpy and dried out but I needed just one more level of thinning drop so I think I ended up using honestly almost 40 ish drops in this bottle just because it was almost fully solid you definitely don't always need this much and you don't want to let your nail polishes get to this point anyway this is just if you're in a tire situation like I am here but usually once your polish starts showing signs of thickening up you can just add a couple of drops or a few drops and then restore it so you don't have to worry about it getting to this point but finally I was able to open it up and I realized that it was super smooth at first I was worried that it was a little bit too liquidy because you can see it's very flowy very easy to move around and it is just fully incorporated into the bottle but once I started applying it onto my nail I thought that it was the absolute perfect consistency. So now let's do a little comparison of what the polishes look like before versus after and you can see what a huge difference. I was a little worried that the brush on this one was going to be unsalvageable but even just having it in that thinner while I was shaking up the bottle really fixed it up super nicely so I was able to get a full manicure and even though it is a pretty thin consistency now I was able to get full coverage in two coats and the most important thing to me was making sure that this polish was still textured so I let it dry fully and I checked it out and it does still have that nice slightly sandpapery texture that I absolutely love so I was really excited about that. And now for the comparison with the hollow glitter topper. And like I said, when I first was applying it, it really wasn't too bad, but you can just see the difference side by side of how much easier and smoother it was to apply it after I use the thinner. So even if it doesn't feel like it makes a huge difference, it really does help a lot. So yeah, that is how I restored these two polishes. And as you can see, it works really well on both different types of formulas. So it does work on toppers as well as full coverage glitters and I was really pleased to see that the China Glaze polish still retained its textured finish even though I used thinner in it. So now we know for the future that we can actually thin out textured polishes which is very exciting news because I love textured nail polish. But yeah that is it for today's nail polish 101 but I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have any product recommendations or thinners that you like to use you can leave those in the comments or of course if you have any requests for a nail polish 101 video that you'd like to to see you can also leave that down below and if you enjoy these types of videos please give this one a thumbs up it lets me know I'm doing a good job and if you're not already subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing I put out new videos every Tuesday Friday and Sunday and a huge shout out to my cosmic admirals on patreon Amanda M rocket man's daughter and Paula I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Caroline and Caroline wants to know if you had to stop making nail polish content and pivot to another topic what kind of videos would you like to make? I would like to say that I, I think I could do makeup content. I very rarely do it on this channel and I think it's a lot of fun because makeup is another one of my passions specifically eye makeup but it really is a whole different animal and I think that my particular makeup style isn't exactly trendy so I don't know that that would work out for me. <laughs> But I also really enjoy reading. I actually read like seven to 10 books a month usually. And I feel like I could do book reviews, but I've also done a little bit of book reviewing on my vlog channel. And I am a very harsh book reviewer to the point where I, I kind of feel bad that I, I'm a little harsh about my book reviews. Um, so maybe that wouldn't work either. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think I can do? Please give me suggestions in the comments <laughs> and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.